This is section 3.7, uh, systems of inequalities in two variables, and uh, three main objectives uh, to determine whether an ordered pair of numbers is a solution of an inequality in two variables. Then we're going to learn to graph linear inequalities in two variables, and then we graph systems of linear inequalities, and then find the coordinates of any vertices. Before we get into the discussion about this particular topic, about two uh, systems of inequalities and two variables, let's uh, think about some, some, something similar. Let's say we have an equation, just a very simple one. Let's say uh, 3x plus 2 equals 14. Then by subtracting 2 on both sides, we wind up as 3x equals 12. And then we divide both sides by 3, and then x equals 4. So we've done that many times. Now, we've also looked at a similar situation, let's say, where 3x plus 2 is, let's say, less than uh, 14. And we remember we can apply the same, same principles we use for equations for inequalities, as long as we do not multiply or divide by a negative quantity on both sides. So we subtract 2 on both sides. So that means 3x is less than 12, dividing by 3 on both sides, or x is less than 4. Now let's look at the solution sets and what they look like. x equals 4 is a point on a number line. 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, etc. And that would be the solution set, a point on a number line, x equals 4. On the other hand, when we have an inequality, and let's say it looks like this, here's 6, here's 5, here's 4, here's 3, 2, 1, and 0, etc. Now, we have the solution set looks like this. It's an interval. And so the solution set, where this is the solution set 4, the solution set here is an interval from minus infinity to, in this case, 4 with a parenthesis. So in other words, there are many, many values that would make this a true statement, whereas in this case, there's only one. And what we will see in this uh, section here, uh, when we have a linear inequality, or, well, in a similar way, when we have uh, an equation of two variables, uh, 2x plus 3y equals 6, we know what the solution set looks like for that. It's a graph of the equation. And so roughly speaking, if this is x and this is y, it look about like this. So that's approximately the solution set to this equation. It's the line, a straight line extending in both directions. So now, when we make that an inequality, let's say, uh, 2x plus 3y is greater than 6. In other words, we simply replace the equality symbol with an inequality symbol. Now, what that's going to look like? And that's the purpose of the discussion here in the next few minutes. So a graph of an inequality is a drawing that represents its solutions. An inequality in one variable can be graphed on the number line. I just showed you that. An inequality in two variables can be graphed on a coordinate plane. A linear inequality in, is one that we can get from a related linear equation by changing the equals symbol to an inequality symbol. The graph of a linear inequality is a half plane. So that's the important word here, the half plane on one side of the graph of the related equation. 
The graph sometimes includes the graph of the related line at the boundary of the half plane. I will explain to you what that last sentence means. It's a little bit obscure the way you, it, it, it's re, it reads here. So the first thing we're going to do is we find out when we have the uh, uh, an inequality and two variables if a given point is a solution. So the, the question here is, is the ordered pair 1 comma minus 4, meaning x equals 1, y equals minus 4, a solution of the inequality 4x minus 5y less than 12. Well, when we replace x with 1, so 4 times 1, minus 5 times, and y is equal to minus 4, minus 4, is that less than 12? Less than 12. Well, 4 times 1 is 4. And minus 5 times minus 4 is plus 20. Is that less than 12? Question mark. Well, 4 plus 20 is 24. And 24, is that less than 12? The answer is no. So in other words, this point, 1 comma minus 4, is not part of the solution set of the inequality of 4x minus 5y less than 12. Now when we look at the other example, determine whether 4 comma minus 3 is a solution of 3y minus 2x less than or equal to 6. So x equals 4 and y equals minus 3. So when we use those values, then we get 3 times y, and y is minus 3, so 3 times negative 3, minus 2 times, and x is equal to 4, is that less than or equal to 6? Question mark. Well, 3 times minus 3 is minus 9, and minus 2 times 4 is minus 8, question mark, is that less than or equal to 6? Uh, minus 9 minus 8 is minus 17, less than or equal to 6. That is true. So here the answer is yes. By the way, this here was false. And that's why we had came to the conclusion that this is not a solution of this linear inequality. Whereas this one here, the point 4 comma minus 3, is part of the solution set 3y minus 2x less than or equal to 6. Graphing an inequality in two variables is a very simple three-step process. And I will go over that a few times here. Number one, replace the inequality symbol with an equal sign and graphs the related equation. In other words, graphing an equation in two variables. This, sep this separates points that represent solution from those that are, that are not, or that do not. Number two, if the inequality symbol is less than or greater than, draw the line dashed. If the inequality symbol is less than or equal or greater than or equal, draw the line solid. And what that means is that, in this case, the line is not part of the solution set. In the other case, it means the line itself is part of the solution set. OK, the graph consists of a half plane that is either above or below, or to the left or to the right of the line. And if the line is solid, the line is as well. The line as well. It's, in other words, it's, it's part of the solution set. Now, to determine which half plane to shade, in other words, the solution set, choose a point not on the line as a test point. Substitute the coordinates of the test point to determine whether that point is a solution. If so, shade the half plane containing that point. If not, shade the opposite half plane. Again, the last part may sound a little bit complicated when you just read it, but when we use that information that's in point 3, it'll become clear very easily. 
So let's let's do this right away. And here's an example. And so here we're supposed to graph uh, 6x minus 3y less than 18. So step one would be to replace the inequality symbol with an equals sign. So that becomes then 6x minus 3y equals 18. So we can graph this equation. And what I would do to simplify the equation, since all the coefficients 6, 3, and 18 are divisible by 3, I just divide the whole equation by 3 to make it simpler. So this becomes 2x minus y equals 6. And if we use the method of intercepts to find the y-intercept, we set x equal to 0, so minus y equals 6, or y equals minus 6. So, so in other words, the y-intercept would be minus 6. And for the x-intercept, we said y equal to 0. So this term goes to 0. That means 2x equals 6, or x equals 3. So that would be the x-intercept. And now all we need to do is connect the two points. Of course, you can use any method you want to graph this equation. I just chose intercepts because it seems to be the easiest one for me. But you can use any method that you know about. OK, so now notice I, I graph the equation. And it's a dashed line because it's an inequality symbol without the equals underneath. OK, so that's part one and part two. So number two, yeah, graph the equation. So we graph the equation. And number three is a matter of the test point. Now, we can choose any point not on the line. And if you look at the original inequality, um, you know, 6x minus 3y less than 18, if we chose the origin as a test point, in other words, if we use test point x equals 0, y equals 0, that makes it a very easy calculation. Because when we replace x with 0, we get 6 times 0, which is 0. Minus 3 times 0 is 0 less than 18. Is that a true statement? 0 minus 0 is still 0. 0 is less than 18. That is true. So what was meant by the last point in the explanation, point 3, is that we now shade the half plane that is above the uh, dashed line. And what this really means is that if you, pick, if you pick the coordinates of any point in this half plane to the left of the dashed line, or above the dashed line, let's say we we'd select this point here, x equals 1 and y equals 3. So that's a point 1 comma 3. If we replace x and y in the original inequality, with x equals 1 and y equals 3, it should make it a true statement. So let's just try that, just to make sure. 1 comma 3. Uh, is that, does that belong to the solution set of this inequality? Well, 6 times 1 minus 3 times 3. Is that less than, uh, less than 18? Well, let's see, 6. And minus 3 times 3 is 9. And it would be minus 3 less than 18. And that is certainly a true statement. So that just proves that this point belongs to the solution set. Of course, we proved it for the point 0. And so if it's true for one point, it's true for all the points. So here's the solution to the 
linear inequality and two variables. The next examples are pretty much the same. So here the next one says graph 4x plus 3y greater than or equal to 12. So we observe this in greater than or equal symbol. So in other words, now we graph the equation, the related equation, 4x plus 3y equals 12. And since the inequality symbol is greater than or equal, we graph a solid, solid line. Let's do that. So this line is a graph of the equation 4x plus 3y equals 12. Okay, now we try the test point 0, 0 in the given inequality. So 4 times 0 plus 3 times 0 is that greater than or equal to 12? Well, 4 times 0 is 0, and 3 times 0 is 0, so is 0 greater than or equal to 12? It's not, so it's no. So 0, 0 is not a solution. So in other words, the solution set is not the half plane to the left that contains the test point, but rather it's on the other side. So we shade this region here. So as it says in a guided solution, we shade the opposite half plane, opposite from our test point zero, which gives us a false indication. So, um, and that's the solution. The next exercise is much simpler, but we still follow the three-step three process. So step number one, we replace the inequality symbol with an equal symbol, so x equals three. And then number two, we graph this equation. Graph, and we know what that is. That is a vertical line to the point x equals three. And again, since it's a less than uh, inequality symbol, we draw a dashed line. So this is a graph of the line x equals 3. And now for our test point, again, we can use the origin, 0, 0. So the origin, 0, 0. And when we replace x and x less than 3, and then we replace x with 0, 0 less than 3. That is true. So we shade the half plane that contains the origin. So everything to the left of the vertical line. And so here's the graph of our solution set. The line dashed and the shaded region to the left of the line. Exercise 6 is quite similar, and again we follow the three-step process. Number 1, we replace the inequality symbol with an equal sign, so y equals negative 4. And we now graph this equation, and we know that that's a horizontal line to the point y equals minus 4. And in this case, it's a solid line because it's greater than or equal. It's an equal symbol there. So this is a graph of the line y equals minus 4. And number 3 would be the test point. And because the origin is not on the line, we can choose that as a test point. So test point 0 comma 0, x equals 0, y equals 0. So, so now we ask the question for y greater than or equal to minus 4, is it true if we replace uh, y with 0, is 0 greater than or equal to minus 4? And that is a true statement. So in other words, we now shade the area above this line. 
And remember in this case, since we have a greater than or equal inequality symbol, the line is part of the solution, the line y equals minus 4. The next part is systems of linear inequalities. So we've drawn one linear inequality. Now we're going to have a system of linear inequalities. And so exercise 7 asks us to graph the system of linear inequalities. x plus y equals 1 and y minus x greater than or equal to 2. OK, so um, now we do the same process, but we do it twice, one for each linear inequality. So uh, if this is A, and this is linear inequality B, then for A, we do the three-step process. So we have x plus y. And now we're going to replace greater than or equal with an equal symbol. So 1, that's step number 1. And then step number 2 is we graph x plus y equals 1. So here's the graph of x plus y equals 1. Then the third part was the test point, 3 test point. And since the origin is not on the, uh, on the line, by the way, it's a solid line, we can choose 0, 0. So when we replace x and y in the given inequality, x plus y with 0, 0, then we ask is you know, x plus y greater than or equal to 1, replacing x and y with 0, is 0 plus 0 greater than or equal to 1. And that, of course, is not true. So this is false or no. And that means that our solution set does not include the origin. In other words, the solution set is above the line x plus y equals 1. Now, I'm not going to shade it in right now because it would really uh, clutter things up a lot. So I'm just going to make a little arrow here as a reminder that the solution set is in this direction. Okay, You can shade it in, but that obscures the rest of the coordinate system because remember, we still need to do the same thing for the second inequality, which we'll do in just a moment here. But so this these little arrows indicate that is where the solution set is. OK, now we go to the second equation, b, second inequality, b, y minus x greater than or equal to 2. So, so now we replace that inequality symbol with an equal symbol. So um, uh, y minus x equals 2. And then we're going to graph this equation here, graph. So this then is the graph of the equation y minus x equals 2. And then the next point was the test point, test point. And again, since the origin is not on the line, we can simply uh, use the origin as a test point. x equals 0, y equals 0. So when we replace in the inequality y minus x greater than or equal to 2, we replace x and y with 0. Is 0 minus 0 greater than or equal to 2? And this is not true. This is false. And that means that the solution set to the second inequality, linear inequality variables, is above the line. So in other words, we're going to go in this direction. That's where the solution set is. Okay. So now what you notice is that in this triangle here, the arrows kind of look towards each other. And so the solution set for the system of linear inequalities would be any point in this region here 
and of course all the way up and above also. And you can verify that by selecting any point in this region here that I shaded in and substitute the coordinates in both of these linear inequalities into variables and you will get a, a true statement in every case. So that's uh, what you want to do, uh, not to clutter up too much, don't shade in the areas. My recommendation would be to make arrows that you know in which direction to look for the solution set and where the uh, arrows kind of look at each other, go in the same direction, that is where your solution set is. As far as graphing the equation is concerned, use any method you want. We looked at many different ways, the table of values, um, uh, you know, slope intercept form of the equation, uh, method of intercepts, so different ways you can do this. The next example is going to be a little bit easier if you look at this as two inequalities, two separate ones, and the first one would be minus 3 less than or equal to y. So minus 3 less than or equal to y, and the other one would be y less than 4. In other words, this says that y is greater than or equal to minus 3. So we can turn this around and say y is greater than or equal to negative 3. Would be the same statement. And so step 1, we make then an equation y equals negative 3. Then we graph, we graph y equals negative 3. And that, of course, will have a solid line because it's a less than or equal or greater than or equal in the other direction. So this is the graph of the equation y equals negative 3. And now for the test point, for the test point we can use the origin. That means for uh, y greater than or equal to minus 3, we replace y with 0. Is 0 greater than or equal to negative 3? That is true. So that means that the solution set is above the line. It was in this direction. Again, we won't shade it in right now because there's another uh, inequality we have to graph. That's y is less than 4. And so we can do that. And we just use the same approach. So y less than 4. That's this one now here. Y less than 4. So number 1, step 1, I'm going to write over here, otherwise run out of space. Uh, we make that an equation, so y equals 4. And now we're going to graph y equals 4. We know it's a horizontal line, so the point y equals 4. And it's going to be a dashed line because it was an inequality. So this is the graph of the line y equals 4. And now we're going to use a test point on this one here. Test point, we're going to abbreviate that TP, test point 0, 0. So when we use y equals 0 in the inequality uh, y less than 4, and we replace y with 0, 0 less than 4. That is a true statement. So in other words, the solution set is going to be below the line. And since the solution set for one of the inequalities was above the line y equals minus 3, it's below the line y equals 4, the solution set is the region between these two lines. extending all the way to the left and to the right.
Now, a system of linear inequalities can have more than two, inequal two, two, uh, two linear inequalities. In this case, we have three. So the first one says 5x plus 6y less than or equal to 30. And then the next one is that 0 is less than or equal to y less than or equal to 3. And 0 less than or equal to 4 less, less than or equal to x less than or equal to 4. So um, and I'm just going to explain the concept of it here since we have done the three-step process now many times. I'm just going to do it for the first one. Um, 5x plus 6y less than or equal to 30. So we make the, the first step is to make that an equation 5x plus 6y equals 30. Then we're going to graph this equation. Graph. So uh, here's my graph 5x plus 6y equals 30. And now the third step would be the test point, 0, 0. So we replace x and y with 0 in the original inequality. So it becomes 5 times 0 plus 6 times 0 less than or equal to 30. And you can see that 0 plus 0 is less than 30. So this is true. And that means that the uh, the uh, solution set includes a test point. So in other words, the uh, shading would go in this direction. Again, I don't want to shade it right now because there are two more, actually there are four more inequalities. But from the previous example, we know what this means. It's a region for the, uh, you know, from between zero and three horizontal lines, you know, 0 less than equal to y, zero le if we set that equal to y, well, let me just go through that, yeah, in one example. So 0 less than equal to y less than equal to 3 means 0 less than equal to y, or y greater than equal to 0, and then the other one would be y less than equal to 3. Now, when we make that an equation, uh, y equals 0. Of course, that's the x-axis. And the other one becomes y equals 3. That's a horizontal line to the point y equals 3. And uh, so there would be the, the other graph when we graph this already in there, that's the x-axis. And now we're going to graph y equals 3. So when we apply the test point principle to um, y greater than or equal to 0, we cannot use the origin in this case because it's on the line. But we can use the test point, uh, test point, let's say, uh, uh, 1 comma 0. or 0, 1, rather. So it would be this one here. And 1, replacing y with 1, makes it greater than 0, for sure. So in other words, the uh, solution set would be going in this direction. And for the other one, y less than 3, we use the test point 0, 0. So we place y with 0. 0 is less than 3. That's true. So in other words, the solution set would go in this direction. So the solution set would be between the x-axis and the line y equals 3. So now there's only one more left. And that is uh, the one for, the, you know, this is a, this is b, and this is c. So we had A here, and we had B here. Now we have C over here. So we can rewrite this as uh, 0 less than or equal to x, or x greater than or equal to 0, and x less than or equal to 4, x less than or equal to 4. So we make these equal, 
we write it as equal sign, so x equals 0, and here x equals 4. So we graph these two equations. Now x equals 0 is the y-axis, and x equals 4 is the vertical line to the point uh, x equals 4. So here's 4, and we have the y-axis already. So when we use a test point, since we cannot use zero, since the line goes to the origin, we can use maybe the point uh, x equals 1, y equals 1. So let's say we use a test point 1, comma 1. So then uh, replacing x with 1 in our inequality here. So 1 for the test point greater than 0, that's true. So it means the solution set is going in this direction here. And then for the other one, uh, x less than 4, we can use our test point 0, 0. So we ask ourselves, when we replace x with 0 in this inequality, is 0 less than 4? And that's true. So true on both parts. So that means the solution set is going in this direction. So now when we look at where all the arrows are going, it's below this line, it's to the right of this line, it's to the left of this line, it's above the x-axis, it's below the line y equals 3. So it's this region in here that is the solution set to these, to the system of linear inequalities. The shaded area here. The next exercise is very similar to, to the previous one, and that is to graph the system of inequalities. What's new about it is then find the coordinates of any vertices formed. So um, for the first linear inequality, let's say A, and let's make this B, and this would be C and D. So for A, step one would be to replace the inequality symbol with an equal sign. So it becomes 2x plus 4y equals 8. Then the second step would be to graph that, that equation. I graph the equation 2x plus 4y equals 8. That's you know, line A. And now the third step was the uh, test point. And so for the test point, we're going to use the, uh, the origin, x equals 0, y equals 0. When we replace x and y in the original inequality, we get 2 times 0 <coughs> plus 4 times 0, less than or equal to 8. And that's a true statement. So in other words, the uh, solution set is in this direction. Then for equation B, or inequality B, step one would be to make it an equation. So this becomes x plus y equals 3, and we're going to graph that. So then we use a test point, and as a test point we can use the origin, 0, 0. So when we replace 
x and y were 0 in the original set. You had 0 plus 0 less than or equal to 3. That's a true statement. So in other words, the solution set is below the line. And then for C and D, we just need to think a little bit. X greater than or equal to 0, that means everything to the right of the y-axis, because the y-axis is equal to X equal to 0. So that means everything to the right of the y-axis. And Y greater than or equal to 0 means everything above the x-axis. So there would be in this direction. So when we look at where all the arrows are going, we find that these, this would be the region. That's the solution set to this system of linear inequalities. Now we just need to do one more thing, and it's to find vertices that are formed. So the vertices that we have are the origin, that's one of them. Here's another vertex. Then there's a vertex here, where the lines intersect. And there's another vertex here. So this is clearly the origin, 0, 0. So that's the vertices. Let's keep track of them, 0, 0. This point here is 0, 2. That's the uh, y-intercept of this line here, 0, 2. And this point here is the x-intercept. That's 3, 0. And now to find out what this vertex is, we need to solve the system of equations 2x plus 4y equals 8 and x plus y equals 3 to find the point of intersection. Because that's what this vertex is. Now we have solved systems of equations many times before, so I'm confident you can solve a little system like this, probably by elimination would be the easiest way. But either way, the uh, solution is 2 comma 1. So that is the, uh, these are the coordinates of the vertex here, 2 comma 1. So these are all the four vertices then. And this concludes section 3.7.